This is my review of my Best Scope 2081 microscope, my new microscope. And uh, this is a microscope that I think deserves a good little bit of attention. It's actually quite uh, an exciting concept. Um, you may ask, who is Best Scope? Best Scope is a small microscope sort of assembler and retailer uh, located in China. So essentially, I bought this microscope directly from the China. Uh, I'm not saying that they are the manufacturers, but they're very close to the manufacturer. There's very little markup between the actual sort of original origination, you know, cost and uh, what it was sold to me for. And uh, that means that it was that many of these, I bought a lot of really expensive things that I wouldn't have bought otherwise uh, if I was buying from, let's say, Nikon. Even if I was looking at used uh, stuff, I wouldn't be able to get uh, this type of system uh, for the same price. So let's get started uh, and take a look. Just just overview, right? So um, you can see it's an enormous microscope, right? Here I have my American Optical Cycloptic, and then my next microscope is the American Optical 110. That's been my go-to microscope for a long time, and I really uh, really enjoy it. And many of my opinions about the 2081 uh, are come from sort of the comparison between it and uh, that original microscope that I used uh, and really enjoyed. So. Yes, it's a giant, much bigger uh, than what I'm used to and very heavy as well. And when I bought it, you know, one of the features that they offered is this ergonomic head that has the tilting sort of eyepiece, uh, which I wasn't sure was worth the cost. But now that I realize just how enormous it is, uh, I'm glad that I bought it because I wouldn't be able to use this uh, without getting a taller chair if I hadn't done that. So I recommend the ergonomic uh, ergonomic eyepiece. Um a little bit of background on this microscope. Uh, as you know, many things in the microscope world are outsourced to China, uh, but but the most high-end components are typically still made in Japan or wherever by uh, Japanese or Europe uh, by the top manufacturers. Well, it turns out that Nikon manufactures a great deal of their stuff at the Novel Optics fa Factory in China. And uh, Novel has used that same factory to build a lot of stuff uh, Microsoft stuff that is kind of on the same level with the same kind of tolerances and it's compatible with Nikon. So you could think of this microscope as kind of a, you know, generic Nikon CI. Um, it's got a lot of things uh, in common with that line. You can you can, actually just a shape. You can kind of see it's the same shape as a Nikon CI, and optically it's compatible as well. So I have, for example, a Nikon E E four hundred microscope. And I took the top, the head off of it and put it on here and it fits mechanically and it also optically looks fine. And I put this on my Nikon so the heads are actually completely compatible. Um, the um, optics are also Nikon compatible. These are the giant 60 millimeter uh, parfocal objectives that you know you might buy if you're compensating for something. Um, they do a really good job. There's a lot of space within them to uh, do all the kinds of corrections and light gathering that they need to do uh, so they're not constrained in that way. Um, well, let's just start from the top down. I'll tell you about all the pieces. Uh, just something else about this microscope. Um, because basically the prices of all these components was really low, like sticker shock low. But um, the the lead time is very long, at least two months. And the shipping on this thing was really expensive, like 500 bucks. Moreover, if you're going to ship something from China, um, during normally there's no tariffs uh, on a microscope, but uh, right now we got a trade war going on with them, and I had to pay 25% uh, tariff on this stuff. So it ended up not ultimately being that cheap. But each individual component, the in, the incremental cost of them was pretty low, and so I essentially said, let me buy the microscope that is the microscope to rule all microscopes, and I bought basically all the good stuff they had. I didn't buy the fluorescence, uh, but everything else I bought. So let's take a look at what I've got. So this is just a, DSL, uh, a Sony DSLR A5100. They made a Nikon and a um, Canon adapter, you know, with a lens in them. But since my camera is a Sony, I didn't buy them. And I figured I'd figure out what I need to do with the camera later. Well, uh, I did buy a C-mount. And I happened to have you know, one of those uh, eBay, you know, $10 uh, C to E adapters. No glass in it, right? It's just a flat piece of metal that has uh, you know an inner thread, thread and an outer thread and I screwed this camera on there and lo and behold it's parfocal with you know I don't have to do any adjustments it's not adjustable either so I was really worried about it um, but it works perfectly I mean I would say it's like an eighth of a turn off 
an eighth of a turn of the fine focus uh, knob off from what you see here, but it's very workable. Um, interestingly, um, the view that I see through the eyepieces, now these are really wide field eyepieces, right? 25 uh, millimeter. It's noticeably larger than what the camera is able to pick up. So I think that the actual size of the C mount opening is a limiting factor on, on, on how wide the field is. Ultimately, I'm going to probably figure out some, you know, this works and I can make pictures and videos with it, but I don't think it's the best way. I don't think it's the best solution out there. So that's something I'm still working on. Moving down to the head, I'm very happy with it. Now, it's enormous, right? It's like, almost seems like it's big, even on this enormous microscope. And the reason for that is the uh, the prism actually moves all the way out of the way. So there's three positions, right? The first position, everything comes through here. Nothing goes there. Second position is 80-20. There it is. And then if you pull this all the way out, look how far you have to pull it. Uh, then all the light goes all the way through. And there's absolutely nothing in between the Telan lens here and my sensor. There's no glass. So, um, you know, it works. And uh, I, I actually really like this feature. I've never liked about microscope heads that so many of them are always splitting the light between, between the trinocular port and the other two, um, no matter what setting you're in. So anyway, great head. Uh, the, and as I said before, the adjustability of it is, is really nice. Uh, okay, so, and of course, the other thing that I like about this head is it's Nikon compatible. So, you can sort of, you can put it on a Nikon microscope if you need to, or if you didn't get this head or something, you could put a Nikon head on this microscope and it would work just fine. So let's move down a little bit and see what else we've got. Of course, I really like these eyepieces. Now, how important is this 25 millimeter uh, in, you know, field of view? Uh, it's different. You know, if I take my 22 millimeter field of view uh, oculars and put them in here, there's a difference, but it's, you know, it's the difference between 22 and 25. It's not a ton, right? You don't really notice it that much. Um, but it's still, this is kind of the ultimate. It's, it's as far as the field of view can kind of go. So the, the head screws on with just an Allen screw. There's an Allen uh, key on the back of the microscope. And then underneath it, there's another Allen screw. And if you undo that, you can actually remove the nose piece completely. It slides out. You see the little dovetail here? It slides out, and it's pretty easy. It's easily interchangeable, maybe just a little bit harder to interchange than the condenser itself. Um, and that's a pretty nice feature. So when I saw that, I thought, you know, there's a whole bunch of stuff I want for this. What I'll do is I'll buy a second nose piece. Okay, so this will be my nose piece with all my bright field and DIC stuff. And then I'll have a second one where I put my phase contrast objectives. That's what I did. And indeed, I have swapped them out several times, but it's... Um, it's just hard enough. I mean, it's a pain in the butt anyway to have to exchange condensers. If you're exchanging the nose piece as well, uh, it's just enough work that most of the time I don't end up doing it. So I think uh, if I had to do again, I, I, maybe I'd just buy a second microscope body. I don't know. Uh, or what I'm probably going to end up doing is putting these objectives on a Nikon uh, body, like an Eclipse you know, E600, which I, I have a body like that. Um, and then I'll just have a phase contrast microscope. So live and learn. Uh, you certainly can exchange nose pieces on this microscope, but um, I think now that I've done it a few times, it's not my first choice. The nose piece is, uh, it has a 40 millimeter dovetail, which is different because if you look at a Nikon CI, it also has an interchangeable nose piece, but it's a 50 millimeter dovetail. So it's not compatible. Um, and I, it, it's not compatible with the older ones either, uh, from what I can tell. So it's its own sort of dovetail. Now you'll see that it's got this slot for uh, for something to be inserted. And uh, this microscope uses that heavily. So I've got an analyzer that'll go into that spot. Um, and of course the DIC system uses that as well. That's actually something that I a little bit miss from the American optical systems. You see on my American optical, I've got this rotating um, insert that you can put polarizers in. It'd be nice if I had that here because that is, it's really convenient. Uh, I don't really like having to slide something in there. But I mean, it's not like it doesn't work. It's just, it is what it is. And with DIC, it's a little bit inconvenient as well because there's a different prism to be put in uh, for low magnification versus high magnification. Oh, I shouldn't complain about it. It's actually a really efficient way to run this system. Like they just put a slot here and they save themselves having to ma manufacture all kinds of other things. Let's look at the objectives uh, that I bought. By the way, how much would this system cost? The base configuration uh, with, with, with achromatic, plan achromatic objectives would be something on the order of $4,000. Now, I paid more than that because I upgraded everything that can be upgraded, basically. So this is a 4X uh, fluorite, 10X fluorite, and then 20X, they actually manufacture an apochromatic, but it's not on their price list. You have to ask for it. 
and uh, this is a little bit custom made. Uh, and it's actually, if you look at it, it's wider than the other objectives. So, um, you know, this is a six position nose piece, but they actually make seven, a seven position nose piece, which is kind of amazing. And originally that's what I wanted, but it turns out that this 20 X Apo is wide enough that it doesn't fit. It won't allow you to put objectives next to it if you get the seven position. So I ended up with the six. Anyway, uh, this is a great objective. 20 X is just sharp as can be, uh, and with no color, uh, you know, fringing or anything. All right. So then we have the 40 X, which I really enjoy. Uh, it's a really great objective. Uh, 40X floor, 0.75 numerical aperture. Now, I also bought the 60X, but they don't make a floor, so it's an achromat. And that objective is a little bit of a disappointment. I'm not saying it was like badly manufactured. It's just the basic specs are, there's such little uh, incremental improvement over the 40X. So look at the 40X. This is a fluorite, 0.75 numerical aperture. The 60X is achromat, 0.8 numerical aperture. So I'm not sure what I thought I would see with that uh, 60X that's not that's not really that clear with the 40X, but in practice, um, I don't end up using it that much because it's just the same thing as 40, just a little bit more zoomed in, uh, but you don't get any extra detail to speak of. I'm actually looking to maybe buy an upgraded uh, 60X, like a Nikon one. These guys don't make any fluorite uh, or Apo 60Xs, although they did say they have an Apo 60X that they're, that's in development, and so someday they may have one but I'm looking to uh, upgrade that with a Nikon. And then for the 100X, I'm one of those people who, you know, may call it a psychological problem, but I really hate using oil. Uh, so I bought a 100X water immersion. And this is not fluoride, it's just achromat. And I hadn't really used water immersion before, but man, I love it. It's just so dang. I mean, it's, it's just that much easier than oil because I just keep a little dropper next to the microscope and put one drop of distilled water on my slides when I want to use 100X and it, it's beautiful. It works really well. When you move uh, the stage around, it doesn't drag the slide cover with it like oil sometimes does. And of course, the oil doesn't get on things. If a little bit of distilled water gets on, you know, whatever, the condenser or another objective, it's no big deal. So anyway, I love that water immersion. I would like to have a fluorite or apple, but they're just, you know, they don't, Best Scope doesn't make them. And if you buy one from Nikon, uh, you're going to have to mortgage your house, right? So these are expensive uh, objectives. So those are the objectives I have mounted. And, uh, you know, the 10X, 20, and 40 all work really well with the DIC system. Um, I have not, well, okay, so here's what, well, I'll tell you about the DIC when I get there. So the next thing I want to talk about is the stage. It's got this glass top, and they actually make a Gorilla Glass top, or sap, they call it Sapphire. Um, but, you know, I haven't scratched this thing at all. I mean, I don't think it does scratch. So I just bought the regular glass. That's not worth the upgrade, uh, in my opinion. The stage is very large because it's a big microscope, right? And it's got this long lever here so that you can rest your arm while you're dialing it. That's a feature. But it's got an unexpected downside. At least, you know, I guess I'm spoiled. Because if you look back to the American optical uh, system, when you focus an American optical, the stage doesn't move. It's the nose piece that moves up and down. And so they were able to build their stage super, super solid. I mean, there's no flex in that stage, okay? So uh, that'll kind of spoil you. Because this thing, it's got to move up and down. It's very large, got a gr great big long lever. And if you put a little pressure on the lever either way, like as you're turning it, if you just if you lean into it a little bit, it'll cause the stage to move just ever so slightly. And when you're looking at high magnification, it's pretty visible. Uh, so you really have to get used to just barely touching it. That's, I think, a little bit of a downside. I don't know if it's any better on Nikon, but I know that it's better on American Optical due to their uh, their focusing system. So that's something I miss. I miss the, the analyzer the rotating analyzer, and I miss the, uh, you know, the, the super, super solid uh, stage. However, you know, I got to say the optical performance of this uh, new microscope is just so much better than what I'm used to with my American optical. You know, American optical is really good with 10x and 20x. The 40x was okay, not nearly as good as my, my 40x here. And uh, beyond that, you know, the 100x, I tried a whole bunch of different plan 100x's with oil. You know, I did everything the way you're supposed to, and I just never really got a good picture. Uh, so, you know, with this, it's so, I use 100x all the time because it's easy and the picture comes through really clear. So, you know, now that I use it, so I went in, you know, to buy this microscope thinking I'm just not one of those people that uses 100x. Uh, but now that I have it with water immersion, I kind of use it a lot. And, uh, and I regret uh, a, a purchase that I didn't make. 
So let me talk about the DIC system. This is one of the cheapest ways to get a new DIC system out there. The DIC system costs just a little bit over $3,000 uh, if you include everything. Okay, so this is the DIC condenser, and it's physically identical to the phase contrast condenser. Okay, it's got the same, everything's the same, except instead of annuli, it's got prisms in it. Okay, um, so there's one prism for the for 10, there's one for 20 and 40. Uh, this one just says FL, I don't know what that means, it, there's nothing in there. And then there's a separate spot for 100. Well, each of those prisms is like $550 or something. And so um, since I thought I don't use 100, I didn't buy it. So I've got all the prisms except 100X. And now I wish I had it because I'm using 100X. Now, you're not supposed to use their DIC with achromat objectives. But, you know, I'm looking to upgrade that. So, you know, it, it's it's not like you can just have that prism sent to, to you. You have to get it originally with this. And I talked to them and they said, I can send the condenser back and they'll send it to the factory and they'll put a hundred X in and send it back to me. But the shipping is not really cheap to China and uh, it takes a long time too. So I'm, I'm actually really disappointed in myself that I cheaped out in that particular respect. Um, so, um, okay. So moving down, the other thing about the condenser is if you look at the condensers, uh, sort of the carrier, it looks just like a Nikon but the size is different. It's just a little bit smaller than a Nikon condenser. So I, you know, it turns out they don't make any high performance like aplanatic, you know, achromatic condensers. So I bought a Nikon one thinking maybe it would fit, but it doesn't fit. It's just a little too big. So I had to actually 3D print an adapter for that. So just be aware that it's not, it's, uh, it's not compatible in that respect. But, you know, I can't complain too much. This condenser works fine, uh, dry and oiled. It's a 1.25 and the phase does as well. Um, both the phase contrast system and DIC came in boxes like this, uh, that, that sort of hold everything. They're pretty familiar boxes you get with, you know, any kind of like cheap microscope, uh, extension. All right. Um, so that's, that's the top part of the microscope Then coming down to here. It takes 45 millimeter, um, filters. And also this little thing has it, it you can, you can put a polarizer on it. Uh, so one polarizer came with the DIC system and I also bought a, a simple polarizer system. Let me move this here. I actually 3D printed a box to hold that because I like to have things just the right size here. Let's see if I can get it open with one hand. So here's the uh, polarizer. You know, this thing kind of, sw kind of swings out and then this gets inserted into, the, into that slot and uh, you can have your polarizer. Um, I don't use this polarizer that much because the DIC polarizer looks like this except the top part actually rotates. So it's a little bit more convenient than the, um, than the simple polarizer. But, you know, it's one of those things I didn't know when I bought it. Um, this is a sensor. It t detects whether you're there or not. So if you leave the microscope on after 15 minutes or something, it turns off. Uh, this button doesn't do anything. It's supposed to connect to a camera. Uh, here is the controls for the uh, field diaphragm and the brightness. And this doesn't do anything either, as far as I can tell. I don't know what that button's supposed to be. Uh, here we have one filter built into the microscope, and that is a neutral density filter. Um, but it turns out it's not, I don't, it's not needed that much, right? With the American optical, I have a 20 volt or 20 watt, sorry, halogen illumination. And when you start it up, even at its dimmest setting, it's too bright to use at 4X, for example, very, very bright. Um, and then you crank it up, you know, if you're looking at something at high magnification in dark field or it's polarized and you've got extinction going on, uh, you need as much light as you can get. And, uh, this just barely has enough light for it. On the other hand, the three watt, three watts LED system in this best scope gets very, very dim, dim enough that you don't need a neutral density filter, even at the brightest, you know, even at 4X. And uh, on, if you turn it up, it gets as bright as staring into the sun. I mean, super, super bright. And the color temperature doesn't change that much either. So I'm extremely happy with this LED system. And I know it's just three watts. I've heard people say three watts is not enough uh, in LED, but I got to say, I think all those watts get turned into lumens that actually get sent down and make it to your eye or something. Like, I think there's very little losses because uh, the system works really well. By the way, I'll show you what that looks like on the back end. It's got these kind of, you know, there's a dovetail here that you unscrew. And then this will just pop right out and then unplugs from there. So you could exchange uh, illumination systems. However, they, they do sell a halogen and an LED. And I asked them if they'd give me both. But apparently, even though they're physically interchangeable, the, um, the electrons inside the microscope need to be set up for one or the other. So once you choose LED, which is what I did, um, you're sort of stuck with LED. Okay. Anyway, 
<laughs> you know, the wideness of the field of view, the performance of the high magnification objectives, and um, and the evenness and brightness and dimness of the illumination system are some of the things that I like the most. Now, I also love the DIC. You know, it's, it's very satisfying to look at. I don't know if it, you know, w reveals that much more detail than you could get using other techniques, but um, it certainly looks good. looks really good. Um, this is a filter holder that I bought with it. It was really cheap and it goes over that and you can put, you know, the, I got like a red and a green filter and a blue filter, um, but I don't end up using them very much. I might, um, end up using them a little bit more if I spend some more time with phase contrast. I mentioned that I don't use my phase contrast objectives very much. Uh, this is my secondary, uh, nose piece. You know, it's just too much of a hassle to put on there. I bought the 4X, just a floor. It's not phase contrast. 10X phase contrast, 20X phase. These are all achromat phase. Um, 40x phase, and this is uh, 100x phase oil, and then I also bought 100x just a bright field oil to go on there as well. This thing doesn't look that heavy, but man, it's it's really, it's like several, it's like I don't know how many pounds that is. It's a lot of pounds for what it is. Okay, so uh, so that's my other nose piece. I think what I'm going to do is just transfer those objectives into my Nikon microscope, and then I'll just build an adapter so that I can use the the face contrast. In fact, here's the face contrast uh, condenser, exactly identical to the uh, DIC condenser. And then I have the little telescope. And I don't know if it's just me, but um, I have no problem centering any of the annuli except the 100X. When you look through this face telescope, the 100X is like this tiny little dot. And I just have the hardest time centering that. So uh, I need to do a little more research into you know what I might be able to do uh, to make that situation better. Let me talk about a few other things that I have here. Um, I bought several condensers. Like these condensers weren't that expensive and I was really worried that I'd be missing out. Remember, the information is really tough because you're buying straight from China. So you're talking to somebody in Chinese or somebody who speaks Chinese primarily and they're in Beijing, you know, no, I think they're in Shenzhen, Shenzhen. And, uh, but the factory's in Beijing. So there's a, there's a lot of uh, opportunities there for miscommunications. So this is their Abbey condenser. And this is their swing out condenser. And they have the same apparent specifications. And I kept asking them, like, what is the difference? Why do these both exist? And I couldn't get sort of a straight answer. So I just bought them both. And I don't think there is any reason for this Abbey condenser to exist. You know, this one's, you know, more convenient. It works with the 4X as well as the other things. And then optically, it seems the same as the Abbey. It's not like achromatic or anything. It just, you know, it's just a different condenser. And they're not even exactly the same. This one doesn't have any threads on the bottom. This one has threads as if you can add, you know, some kind of a filter holder or something, but they don't have any filter holder for the system. So that's a little bit of a downside uh, buying from this particular company. It's just they, they put together parts from, you know, probably a few manufacturers and there are some things that they just don't have. They don't have high performance uh, condensers and the condensers they do have are um, a little bit a little bit uneven. I'll tell you something else that's a little bit odd. Um, the phase contrast condenser has a little spring in it that prevents the condenser aperture from being used uh, unless you're looking through the bright field spot. And that makes sense with, with phase contrast because you don't want that, you know, the aperture blocking off your the annulus. You, you don't use the, 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 the aperture with phase contrast. But you can use it with DIC. And the DIC condenser had that same spring in place. I don't know why they put it there because you certainly do want to use the the aperture when you're using DIC. So it's just, I went in there, I unscrewed it, opened it up and disabled the spring and now I am able to use that. So there's something to be aware of. This is a dark field condenser and it works really nicely. Uh, it just works for the lower magnification uh, objectives. I have the oil, the high power um, dark field condenser on its way but uh, hasn't arrived yet. So, you know, shipping time on this, you know, between ordering it and arriving, or I should say paying for it, and it arriving is something like two months, maybe just a little bit more. Um, so be prepared for a wait. You know, some patience is required. Now, this is a box that I printed. Of course, they have a box for the DIC stuff, but I actually kind of like my own box better um, because it's just the right size. This is where I keep my DIC stuff. So here's the polarizer. And you can see it looks just like the simple polarizer, but it's got, you know, sort of a rotation. You know, you can swing it out and you can rotate it. And then this is what the sliders look like. There's sort of, this has the analyzer and it has the, the prism in it. So this is the 4100 and then there's another one for uh, the 20 and, or I guess, yeah, 20 and 40. I guess it doesn't really work with 10. Well, and maybe it's 10 through 40. You know, let me look at it. I'm going to say the wrong thing here. Yeah, 10 and, sorry, 10 and 20, 
And then that one's 40 through 100. I thought there was something there. So, um, yeah, I bought a lot of stuff. I bought the phase contrast kit. I bought the polarizing kit. I bought the DIC kit. I spent a lot of money on it. Um, and, you know, in retrospect, I probably would have bought things a little bit differently. But, you know, my I, I sort of went through what it takes to learn this stuff so that you can benefit from it. If you've got a few thousand dollars and a few months to spare, um, it's a really outstanding microscope. It's so satisfying to look through. Um, you know, I can barely bear to look through my my American optical anymore because it's just, it, there, it dominates it in terms of its uh, performance. Now, what do I miss? Uh, there's one other thing I miss, and that is, uh, it's not that easy for me to use stop patches, you know, dark field or oblique illumination. Uh, in the American optical, there's a little slot that you slide it in, and you could even put like a polarizer there and rotate it. Um, these condensers don't have any sort of filter holder like that. And you see, they've got some space there between the bottom and uh, where the actual diaphragm is. So I need to 3D print some kind of a cylinder. But then each of the condensers has a different um, diameter, slightly different diameter as well. And so it's not like I can just print one solution for all these condensers. So I need to figure out exactly what I'm going to do with that. Otherwise, I'm really happy. And the truth is, I don't use dark field as much as I used to because I get a lot of that, um, you know, those transparent things become more visible when you're using phase contrast or uh, DIC. Now, I... Um, I, I want to mention Best Scope is not the only place to buy this microscope, of course. Um, as is sort of common with China, there's one factory that makes it and then sells it under a different, bunch of different brand names. So other brand names that I've seen this under is uh, Nextscope uh, E900. And I think Nextscope is owned by Novel Optics. So that might be, you know, from the horse's mouth. Um, also, if you're in Europe, especially, uh, Euromex Delphi Observer. It's the same microscope. Uh, Labomed LB286 or Radical RXL R-5. Now, I think the rat, certainly the Radical is a little different, and also LaboMed might be sourcing its objectives from a different place, but all of them are going to be Nikon compatible. Um, and then, of course, the most common way that we in the United States will see this microscope is as an AccuScope EXC 500. So remember, most uh, infinity-corrected microscopes from China are set to the Olympus standard. But, but, you know, because Novel builds these Nikon microscopes, it also makes Nikon standard, uh, you know, objectives and heads. I, I don't know what pieces. It, it's all a little bit misty uh, where things are actually made. But I can tell you that the price is, you know, it's a, it's a lot of money, but it's a lot less money than it would be if it was branded Nikon or uh, Olympus or Zeiss or Leica. Um, now, I just want to sum up uh, complaints that I have. I don't love, well, I mean... I understand why they did it. It's very convenient for them to just have a slider and then and then the DIC and the analyzer go into that little spot. But I would prefer it if they had sort of a rotating intermediate neck piece, but they don't. Now, Nikon does make something like that. And because this head is compatible, I might be able to buy it. But um, man, it's expensive for what it is. Um, uh, all right, DIC, base condensers. Okay, just looking through my notes here. Yeah, I think those are really all my complaints. I mean, all my complaints are so minor, right? The stage has some kind of flex, but not a lot. The um, the DIC condenser came with this, you know, prohibition against using the iris, but it, of course it was fixed. Overall, I'm extremely happy with it. Um, it really is. It's a premium microscope made in in a sort of not premium place or sold under a not premium brand, and for that reason, it's kind of a good deal. So I do recommend it. Um, yeah. So any questions that you have about it, uh, that I might be able to answer, I'm happy to fill you in. Now, did I talk about the, um, did I talk about the dark, the uh, neutral density filters? Maybe that's, that's one more complaint that I have. Um, so when I talked to them, they said they've got these different neutral density filters that I can install in the microscope and they're pretty expensive. Um, but I thought, okay, well, I'm used to neutral density filters, right? Because I used it on, on the AO10. And I asked, can you have all those installed at once? And they said, yes. And in fact, if you look, there's a spot there for two more filters in the light path. But, um, and, and I asked specifically, are they going to be installed in the microscope? But they weren't. Because um, there was just a miscommunication either between me and them or between them and the factory or whatever. So they just gave me these 45 millimeter uh, neutral density filters that were really expensive. And I don't really have that much use for them. I, I, I don't want them. I wish that they were built into the microscope. So that's probably, I would say that's my number one biggest complaint about the experience in general. 
and I think it's a it was if you're going to buy from Best Scope in particular, you need to do you know double and triple check everything that you ask them for. Make sure that there's no misunderstandings uh, between you and them. But overall, I mean, you can't complain about uh, this quality of microscope at the price that I got it. And um, you know, nothing was like broken or misaligned or or sort of or of poor quality. The DI system works good. The objectives are all really clear and really good, really well aligned. Um, everything's really well centered even. So, you know, no complaints about that stuff. Great performing microscope.